For example, potassium can displace out sodium. But can sodium displace out? No. Here can sodium displace out uh, potassium from its chloride? No. no. Reaction. Reaction. So there is no reaction. reaction. So what is the use of this? The use of study of this activity series? It helps us to purify the metals. It helps us to displace out pure metals. So one way it is used to reduce the metal oxides or metal. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So can you remember the 17 metals in the same order? Yes. It takes some time, isn't it? So you need to take more time to remember the order of the metals. See, I can be asking any of the metal whether it goes on or not, whether the reaction takes place or not. I can pick up manganese and then I'll uh, ask you to with uh, nickel or anything. Does manganese displace out nickel? Yes. yes. Does zinc can displace out uh, calcium from calcium sulfate? No. no. Right? So with this order, you can easily say which one is uh, to, for an easy study. I have just uh, uh, given a small acronym. What is this? Mr. PSC Man Sintel Chap. So Chap is what? His surname, suppose. So it is, suppose you take this is the name of a person. Mr. PSC Man Sintel Chap. This gives you the total 17 metals in the series in the order. How does it give out? PSC Potassium, Sodium, Calcium. Right? Next. The name, you see first first name and second name. This is what, if you take, uh, what is this? Initials. Initials, these are the three initials. And then, Manzim is the first name and Sharp is the second name. So what does it show? Potassium. Sodium. Calcium. Magnesium. Aluminium. Manganese. Zinc. Iron. Nickel. Tin. Lead. reactive metal and which is low reactive metal and what are the ultimate uses of series? Uses of series? Purify the metals, purify the metals. Purify the metals. Purify the metals and then to study to study the displacement reactions right whether it takes place or not between the metals right now you tell me finally does iron displaces out sodium from its solution? No. no. Can iron displace out aluminium from its solution? No. 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 Aluminium. No. Can copper displace out potassium? No. 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 Isn't it? So with this equation we come to know, with this series we come to know whether the displacement reaction between the metals takes place or no. not. Fine. I suppose everyone has understood clearly the class. Right? Yes. As we have studied the reactivity series, you know that uh, different metals are refined or purified by different methods. Right? Now, metals on the top of the reactivity series are purified by just heating their oxides or sulfides. Right? So, for example, is it oxides or sulfides of the reactivity series like potassium or sodium and all or obtained by the electrolysis of the salt solution as we have salts. So, metals on the top of the reactivity series are obtained by the electrolysis of their salt solutions and they are all good conductors. They, they form electrolytes. In the same way, when we go to the metals of the moderate reactivity series, they are available in the form of their carbonates or sulfides which are obtained or reduced by either roasting in the case of sulphide ores or calcination in the case of carbonate ores, right? Then what happens? What do you get? What do you get when uh, roasting and carbonate, uh, calcination is done to the sulphides and carbonates? Oxides. They change to their oxides, right? Why? Sulphides cannot be directly changed to pure metal. Why are they changed to first oxides? Yes. So it is easy to obtain a metal from its oxide rather than its sulphide or carbonates. So then how is the pure metal obtained from its oxides? By 
reduction. Pure metal is obtained from its oxide by reduction either using coal or in the same way a highly reactive metal. Then as we go to the metals of low reactivity, where you have what? Noble metals. Like what do you have? They all come under metals of low reactivity series where they are obtained by just heating their ores. Now, all these metals which have been subjected to various methods of purification are not 100% pure. So, they might be 99% or more than that with purity. So, all these metals are subjected to electrolytic refining. Where we can obtain the metals. What are copper pyrites? What does it contain? Sulfur. Sulfur. Copper with sulfur is known as copper pyrites. So, subjected to heating so that copper has been decomposed to sulfur to copper sulfide to copper oxide. Then copper oxide to pure copper, right? Then this copper is then finally subjected to electrolytic refining. Right. We take an electrolyte which is nothing but copper sulphate. Where is the electrolyte? Acidified copper sulphate is the electrolyte. Why do they add acid to the copper sulphate solution? Copper sulphate is itself a salt solution and it's a good conductor. Then why do we add little so uh, little, little acid? To increase its conductivity. Right, to increase its conductivity. So copper sulphate is added with few drops of sulfuric acid and made a electrolyte which is a very good conductor of current. Now copper sulphate that is acidified copper sulphate is the electrolyte. Then what is anode? Anode is a positive electrode or a negative electrode? Positive electrode. So you can see here anode the positive electrode is nothing but impure copper. What is impure copper? The copper which has to be purified. So anode is nothing but impure copper electrode. Then what is cathode? Impure. Negative electrode. So you can see the negative electrode is nothing but cathode and it is what? Pure copper. So this is the arrangement and these two electrodes are connected to the battery which is the source of current. And then you can have a seat, look here in the diagram, there is a switch to supply the current, to switch on or switch off the current supply. And here, the cathode is connected to which terminal of the battery? E is passed. What happens here, you know? When the current is passed, from the impure copper electrode, what is the impure copper electrode here? Anode. Anode. So here, when the current is passed into the electrode, see, does it form a circuit? See the battery, anode and then here the anode is in contact with the electrolyte, electrolyte and it is again connected with the cathode. So this forms a circuit here, right? So on the on passing current, what is happening? On passing current here, pure copper separates out from anode. Anode is what? Impure copper electrode which has to be purified. So here pure copper separates out from anode on passing current. So when it is separating, you see look here. Copper separates out from the anode. How does it separate out? You look here. Copper the impure uh, electrode that is anode changes into Cu plus 2 ions with the loss of two electrons. Loss of electrons is known as? Oxidation. 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 So you can see here, pure copper separates out from the anode in the form of Cu plus 2 ion. So Cu has been, that is, copper has been oxidized to copper ions by the loss of two electrons. Right? So this is an oxidation reaction. And where is it taking place? At anode. At anode. Right. Good. Right? So in here at impure copper, Oxidation of copper takes place with the loss of electrons. So what is happening in the next case? Pure copper separates out from the anode and dissolves in the electrolyte. So Cu plus 2 ions dissolve in the copper sulphate solution. At the same time, now an equal amount of Cu plus 2 ions, an equal amount of Cu plus 2 ions separate out from the copper sulphate. How do they separate out? You can see here. Copper sulfate on passing current, right, decomposes to Cu plus 2 ions and then SO4 minus 2 ions. So what is that Cu? It's an ion. What, what type 